Today I'm going to show you how I took my garage from this to this. Now let's jump into it. So here's our starting point of the garage and as you can see it is quite a mess and we have a lot of work to do. And last week I actually posted part one of this garage renovation series and that part we took down all the shelving inside, cleaned up the floor, patched all of the holes and all of the walls, and then we sprayed everything with a fresh coat of paint, gray going on the walls, white on the ceiling, and we finished off the episode by painting the doors black. So now here's our starting point for part two of this renovation. And the first thing we're gonna tackle is the floor. We're gonna be doing an epoxy floor and I really wanted to do this DIY. rust actually sells a DIY epoxy floor kit that you can buy pretty much any big box store. However, after doing a lot of research, I realized that they just don't sell you the most high quality product you can get. And a lot of customers had some mixed reviews on how long it lasted and how durable it was. So it was a hard decision, but I ended up going with a commercial business to do my epoxy floor. They use a much higher quality epoxy as well as making sure to use full broadcast when applying the flakes. This means that they put a ton of flakes on the ground and then just sweep up whatever doesn't stick. In a lot of the DIY kits, it just comes with a small amount of flakes and you don't end up getting full coverage. The end result turned out fantastic and they were also able to epoxy the small concrete border that went around the garage and they also made sure to put a little black section where the garage door lines up with the asphalt driveway. This is a really nice touch that I don't think I could have done with just the DIY kit. After letting the epoxy cure for a couple days, I could then start unloading the trailer that I packed up in part one. We're planning to have the right side of the garage be a home gym, so we ordered a squat rack from Rogue, although assembly is required. I was a little nervous because there's probably about 30 or 40 boxes of stuff, but it actually wasn't too bad of an assembly. We went with bumper plates, and this is so that they're all the same size, however they do vary in weight, and we also ordered some smaller weights to add on if we need to. The first thing I decided to assemble was the weight tree. This will hold all those weights nice and easily, and I think now's the perfect time for a building montage. <laughs> After the squat rack was assembled, all of the wall cabinets had arrived. And during the unboxing, I found this pretty cool device attached to the side. If it flips over, it turns red, and then when it flips right side back up, it stays red. That way you know if your package was mishandled. Luckily, none of mine were red, so we're all good. And I actually ordered a six-piece set, but I only found two of them here, but then I realized that the other two were actually inside of each of the larger ones. This is pretty cool packaging and really efficient for logistics. Now, while the right-hand side of the garage is going to be a gym, the left-hand side is going to be more of a workshop, so these are going to go over there. The kit does come with legs for each of the cabinets. However, I wanted these to be floating, and I was able to actually rest them on that ledge there, as you see, and then just screw them directly into the studs. The upper cabinets were mounted with a French cleat system, and everything else I just used screws directly through the cabinet. Now this wasn't exactly cheap, but I was really surprised at how high quality it was and I think you get a lot of value for your money. Everything comes with a nice black powder coat that is very durable, also all the cabinets are held shut with magnets and even some of them are soft clothes. Also all the doors can be locked with a key if you want to use that feature and I just think it looks so sleek with that matte finish and then the gloss handles. Once all the cabinets were installed, I could then start organizing this back left corner of the garage. A lot of this organizing had to do with rearranging all of my wood. I always have a ton of wood because I just can't throw any of it away, and I actually have a ton of plywood specifically because of an upcoming project. I'll tell you a little bit about that later in the episode. I then moved outside to get some fresh air and make some exterior improvements to the garage. First up were these lights. The install for these sorts of lights are relatively the same, so I'll give you a quick rundown. After taking out the old base plate and putting on a new one, I slid on the light for the very first time and noticed that the screws were protruding a little bit too far for the caps to go on properly, so I took my angle grinder to cut them down to the right length. I find myself cutting down these screws all the time whenever I install lights, so if there's any electricians out there, let me know if there's a better way to do it. Also, after I cut off the end of the screw, I made sure to kind of round it over, that way you can screw the nut on properly. 
If you don't do this, the angle grinder will leave a little bit of a burr on the end, and then when you go to screw your nut on, it'll probably cross thread. After that was complete, instead of using marettes, I actually added Wago connectors to connect all of the wires. I find this a bit easier when you're trying to install a light like this, where you're holding light with one hand and connecting the wires with the other. I then checked to make sure that the light worked, and we were all good to go. Then we can move on to installing the address numbers. I found these on Amazon and I'll make sure to link them below along with all the other products that I use in the video. Using my laser, I aligned them all in a nice row vertically and then I marked where I need to drill the holes with a sharpie. The mounting system works by attaching some metal spikes to the back of all the numbers and then mounting them to the wall using some anchors. Make sure that you use the right drill bit size so it's not too big or not too small so that the anchor fits perfectly inside the hole with a little bit of friction. I then went back and added silicone caulk to all the holes to make sure that no water got in since this is on the exterior of the house. After hammering in all of the anchors, I then added another round of silicone caulk because you can't be too sure with this sort of thing. I could then finally install the numbers by grabbing a block of wood and hitting it with a hammer, driving those steel spikes into the anchors. I noticed the small hammer wasn't cutting it, so I had to switch to a bigger one, but eventually got everything to work out, and I think it looks really nice in the end. I could then move back inside, and I decided to move these tables further back into the garage. I think it makes a lot more sense, and I can pull my motorcycle in a lot more easily. And while I was at it, I updated all these switches and outlets too. Now the last thing I want to do in here, which might be the most important, is to upgrade the lighting. I'm going to switch out all the current lights I have for these big LEDs, which you can adjust to different angles, and it provides a lot more light. These screw into your standard E26 socket, so it's really easy to install. Let's get to it. These come in a two pack and I was able to find these on Amazon as well and I'll make sure to leave the link down in the description. It's hard to tell on camera but these probably double the amount of light that the old lights had and it makes a huge difference. Also, on a bit of a side note, if you have a lot of bugs in your garage like me, you should pick one of these up. It's a blue light that attracts all the bugs and on the back is a sticky pad that collects them all for you. Pretty nice little product. And then we had one last big project left in this garage renovation before we could call it complete and that's redoing the driveway. Now this is obviously a bigger project, so I'm not going to be doing it DIY, so we did call in the professionals for this one. It turns out that there was actually two driveways there. One driveway was just laid on top of the other, so there was a lot of excavating to do, but these guys worked really fast and they were able to excavate it and pour the entire driveway all in one day. We debated about doing concrete versus asphalt for a little while, but we decided that asphalt was best because it was about half the price, as well as we think it looked better with the house. We think concrete would have kind of clashed with the design. The reason we got a new driveway was because the old one was extremely bumpy and starting to crack in places and fall apart, but we were also able to add some newer section of driveway like this back portion here where we can store some of our garbage cans out of the way. And here's what the driveway used to look like. This is from the bathroom demo a few months ago, and now here's what it looks like today. Quite the difference, and we were also able to fix a lot of drainage problems that the old driveway had. So now let's take a look back at what the garage used to look like. It was quite a mess, full of stuff, and not the most efficient use of storage. So without further ado, check out the new garage. I'm really happy with the way that this project turned out. I was able to get a ton more storage and better organize the space. Not to mention, I also got a home gym too. We picked up this cable machine, and in conjunction with the squat rack, I think we can do pretty much all the movements you'd ever need to, and I'll never need to drive to the gym again. Got no excuses now. In addition to the interior of the garage, we also did a major exterior upgrade. In addition to the driveway, we also updated the garage door and gave the house a complete fresh coat of paint. Let me know what you guys think of the color choice down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like because it really helps out the channel and also subscribe if you haven't already as we post a new DIY video every single Saturday. Speaking of which, next Saturday's video we're going to get back into the basement bar and start building those cabinets, hence all the plywood earlier. So get subscribed and stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week.